I guess just what's the aftermath after all the post and what is it like on the team that you guys after? The aftermath? Yeah, the aftermath. Two one series. Mm -hmm. We gotta win. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they're frustrated. Uh aftermath is we gotta win and uh, we're going for another one tomorrow. Is it, is it something that is talked about in the locker room after the fact or in practice the next morning? It's going to happen, and you know, it happens in the playoff games. Um, you know, I guess guys feel a little braver because, you know, you know, scrums like that probably aren't going to uh, result in anything. Um, I wish I was a little quicker to the scrum, for sure. I was a little behind, but I uh, wish I would have grabbed them first. But, yeah, it's going to happen, but no aftermath except for a win. That said, games one and two of the series were quite conservative defensive battles. Um, yesterday it opened up a little bit, and then you have the thing at the end, you know, the, the little skirmish at the end of the game. But do you, that adds a little nastiness, a little, a little flair to a series. Do you think that helps a series that, that, that makes it adding more emotion, that nastiness needs to be a part of a playoff series? Uh, I don't think it needs to be. I think it's always going to be when you play the same team over and over again uh, in a short span like that. It's, it's only natural it's going to happen. Um, I don't think it's something that, you know, a team is saying, no, we got to be nasty, you know, we got to go start a scrum and, you know, start eye gouging guys. Like, that's, it's never like that. It's, uh, you got a silent button on that thing? <laughs> just, just swipe it down, man. It's a little moon. It's a little moon. That's a final attempt. Yeah. Um, no, it's just, uh, let's just playoffs. It's just going to happen. Do you think that, because Turk was just here saying, he thinks it helps your team in particular, that it, it makes you guys more focused and plays better. Do you agree with that? Do you think it, 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 it allows you guys to get in the game more? Yeah, I think if you looked at some games that that's happened throughout the year, I think, uh, you know, more guys get engaged. Um, you know, some of those top guys, I think they start playing a little more physical and um, getting into battles a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I think our team kind of thrives on that. Uh, you know, sometimes sh some teams shy away. I think, uh, I think we do well with it. Davis thrive on that too, do you think? Yeah. 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 What, what about your team's resiliency? And you seem to play your best for your backs on the wall. How do you how do you, how do you explain that? Uh, well, we've we've done it all year. Um, I think we've practiced it probably more than we wanted to this year. But um, I, I think you know that, that first series against Pittsburgh is a is a really uh, big confidence boost for us. Um, you know, playing down three games, um, you know, let alone down in a period, down in a game. Um, you know, we're down in the series, 2 nothing, and, um, you know, that game last night was huge. It's, it's you know, coming back 3-1 is, is one thing. Coming back 3-0 is, you know, a different different animal. You know, it's still very doable on this team, but um, not in a position we wanted to be in. So, um, yeah, I think we knew it was, you know, in a sense a must win, and, and we came out and, Oh, the job done. Do you think that intensity from the end of the game is more likely to spill over into the next more often than not? And do you think there was a little bit more of an aspect to it, especially because the cheap shot kind of came on Ryan Langren? I hope so. How, how does the resilience of this team, does, does anything about it surprise you or impress you? Or how, how do you look at how you guys always seem to respond in general? Uh, you know, I think it surprised me at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, before we added some uh, older veteran players, uh, we were, you know, one of the youngest teams in the league and still kind of um, coming back in games, um, you know, battling back and some after a bad loss. You know, I, I don't think we strung together very many long losing streaks at all this year. Um, yeah, a couple of bad losses here and there, and we, we seem to bounce back. I think it surprised me then. Um, doesn't surprise me now. It's uh, it's kind of been the identity of this team is, um, you know, we. We learn and we forget, and uh, we get back to work the next day. And um, you know, it's something that you definitely have to carry into the playoffs. And we have. How does that? How does it work, Ryan? When, like, at the end of the game, you knew it was Domi that went after Langford, right? And at times during the game, it's Tony D'Angelo, yeah, right? And Turk was kind of doing this thing to him too. Are those guys then become when they get on the ice in Game Four? Are they you look to hit them a little harder? I mean, how does that work? Does it matter who it was, or is it just the game itself might just take on that feel of being a little more physical? Um, <laughs> I don't want to say anything stupid here. Uh, no, I mean, I, yeah, I. You know, you never want to see a guy chirping your bench. Uh, 
you know, I was on the ice for that. I wish I would have seen that. I was more looking at the Domi Lindgren thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure guys aren't going to shy away from uh, finishing checks on those guys as, you know, just like anybody else in their, on their lineup. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be some added nastiness when, you know, a specific player does something.